Hello, hello, good morning. I think I'm a little bit late this morning. I apologize. I'm kind of in a slow mo in the last uh, in the last few days, um, if I'm honest. So I'm hoping you guys are going to be coming on slowly, and I'm going to be saying hello to all of you as usual. This is my Monday live at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And I know some of you are as far away as Australia, so it's very difficult for you to be on and watch it, but that's okay. You can always watch the replay. And I'm seeing some people coming on, so that's great. Of course, Debbie's always the first one to say hi, good morning, I can see you. Um, the new people coming on, please, I by yourself say hello to me keep typing comments because when you put comments in it helps other people to see that i'm on and then you know it encourages them to come and watch the uh, the training or the chat or whatever i don't like the word training actually because it sounds so so formal but whatever it is that we do just uh talking and i'm sharing some things that I know to be true and hope you find some ideas and tips and, and things that you can use for your own uh, transformations. So for the people who don't know me, so I see somebody else just said hi, but um, you can uh, go identify yourself by selecting, uh, giving StreamYard permission to use your Facebook profile. You do it just at the top. <clears throat> of the video and you have to do it only once and then from now on i'll be able to see who you are but if you're not doing that <laughs> then uh you just give me your name just type the uh your name in the chat box and i'm trying to sorry i'm looking down at my phone because i want to see myself talking live uh on my phone and this way i'm able to uh see the names but i can't see myself so i'm sorry so for those of you who don't know me I'm Sveta. I am a home stager and house flipper and redesigner. And now I'm an Airbnb operator as well. And this is really what I want to sh share with you today. Uh, it's not quite a new venture for me, but I'll tell you a little bit of my story and I'll, sh I'll share all my secrets with you and everything that I've done. So I've been running this group for over a year now and um, Kathy from Saskatoon. Oh, we have out westerners, out westerners today. So we have Debbie's also from uh, Alberta, central Alberta. Nice to see you. And I'm in Montreal. So we have a group, a bunch of Canadians. Anybody from the U.S. on here? Identify yourself. Let me know if there's anybody from the U.S. or anybody else from Canada or any other exciting uh, countries that we have. I was I was actually looking at this um, post that I had that became viral about asking people where they're from and it's amazing we have people from Australia and New Zealand and uh, Scotland and UK and of course Canada and the USA different all over the country from west coast to coast to south coast uh, east coast I mean and then we have um, people from South Africa and uh, who else did I see there were some even very unusual places that were, were quite exciting we had somebody from Hawaii anyway all over the place so that's pretty amazing uh, so what I do is I really help two types of people, people who are home sellers and who are uh, wanting to do what it takes to make sure that they get the best, best possible sale. And especially people who know that they their house needs a little bit of updating, but they don't necessarily know what to do, where to invest their money in, and um, how to structure their cosmetic updates in the best possible ways so they spend as little as possible and they make as much as possible. So those are my people. This is my best uh, clients that get incredible crazy value out of working with me and we've had lots of testimonials in the group and we're gonna have some more and you can go back and review them if you're interested to work with me. And the other group of people are people who are not not necessarily selling or not necessarily selling yet like Debbie 
but who are always interested in beautifying and redesigning and restyling their house and making improvements that will increase your property's uh, resale value. And that can will always come in handy, right? Even if you don't sell your house today, but maybe it's going to be in six months or a year or in a couple of years, as long as you do things in a way that remains neutral and something that's not going to be like super wild and you're going to have to redo everything when you decide to sell then you can work on that slowly you can enjoy it while you're living in the house and then you can um, when you sell your house you'll be so much more ready so i work with people who just want to style or redesign their home. And today, what I thought would be like really fun is to actually show you something that I have recently done and completed or almost completed with my with my husband. And I'm very lucky. Okay, I'm lucky because to be completely fair and honest, I use my skill as, as a designer and as a as home stager. But my husband is a, a, a renovator and a builder, and he's, you know, very, very amazing at what he does. And so in spite of us <laughs> fighting quite a bit on every project that we do, we still make a good team. And the results between, you know, his ideas and my ideas and changing things uh, they usually come out pretty good. So I am not the one to brag. I don't like bragging, but I must say that the reason I, one of the reasons I wanted to show you this particular project, which I call the Love Shack, is because I think that we did something pretty amazing as a transformation with uh, as little money as possible. And uh, the reason for that, so you just keep, as you guys are coming on, just keep saying hello to me. And if you have any specific questions or comments, you know, please um, let me know so I can address them because I can see them in, in my book, in my, on my screen, even if I cannot see uh, what's happening on my screen right here. So, uh, so what happened with this particular project, which is kind of unusual for us because we flip homes. So we buy homes in really bad state of disrepair. And I always say, you know, the worse, the better. And then uh, we fix them up and we resell them. But this one was something completely different. So it was my husband's dream for many years. It's his dream, not quite mine. But he wanted to have a house on the waterfront. He has a boat. And for him, it was something that it was very, very important, even if in, in the summer is quite short in Montreal. But, you know, it, 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 the winters are long and painful. The summers are short. But so more the reason that he wanted to have a house on the water so i see a lot of people are joining us so say hello type your name say good morning to me so i know who is on and uh so we've been looking for the last couple of years i would say on and off for um for a waterfront property somewhere that would not be further than like an hour drive from montreal and unfortunately as you all know the prices have gone quite crazy uh, over the past pandemic we even started looking before but the timing was not right we didn't necessarily have the money or we were in the middle of a of a flip and we couldn't financially handle buying another property so things were not just not working out so we were looking and prices went up and it was like very very crazy and we really didn't think that it would be possible for us to buy a waterfront property anymore and then uh literally on december on december 23rd i accidentally just for fun went on mls and typed in my criteria there's a particular area that we were interested in which is an island off the island of montreal because montreal is an island in the middle of st lawrence river and the next island over it's called the peru uh, and that's the area where we're very interested in because it's close to Montreal because it's a very nice community it's very nature oriented but the prices have gone absolutely crazy there and all of a sudden on December 23rd I did uh, come upon a new listing which came out that day and um, 
I saw the price and I was like, this is not possible. This is crazy. Like there is a mistake. So the price was quite affordable. It was really within our price range. The, the land is a very small. It's under 5,000 square feet. And the house was tiny. Okay. So the house is very small. It was listed as a one bedroom house. And it looked like it was an original 1939 kind of a cottage. And then over the years, people kind of pushed it out and extended and added rooms. Anyway, it was a very bizarre looking house. I'll show you the pictures of what it looked like before. But the setting, the location was absolutely spectacular. And so on the same day, remember it's December 23rd, so it's snow, it's really dark. And by the time I made it there, it took me an hour and a half to actually drive out there. It was completely dark by the time I got there because it was a huge snowstorm that day. But we needed to go see it right away because we knew that uh, the bids would start coming in and we uh, would, you know, we probably would not be able to, to purchase it. So uh, as we basically uh, saw, I just saw the outside, but it was very dark, so I couldn't really see much. And snow, of course, so I couldn't see much of, uh, of the yard or much of the outside, but I saw that it was directly over the water and you could see the shimmering lights of Montreal on the other side it was so pretty and then we saw the house on the inside literally for 15 minutes and I knew how important it was to my husband so I knew it was our only chance okay to to buy something that we could afford and I told him okay let's let's put a bid in let's buy it let's make it happen I didn't know how we didn't necessarily have the money we have a hard time getting financing from the uh, traditional banks because we're both self-employed and so there's no way we can get a mortgage so basically we had to figure it out but we were selling we were ready getting ready to sell another flip but the money was extremely extremely tight i had to kind of do some manipulations of bank accounts and stuff and even borrowing uh, some money from my parents over the course of two weeks because we ended up buying this house before we were able to sell because we, before we sold uh, our last flip. So, but I knew I really wanted to, to make my husband happy. And I really thought to me, it was a, uh, I saw the opportunity. So he saw the dream. I saw a, a business opportunity. I, I saw that this was a good investment. And I know it's going to grow in value. And so I figured we're going to be able to combine both. So um, say hi to me, type comments. I don't even know if you guys are still on. Everybody's so quiet. So tell me if you're still on, if you're watching, if it's all good. So long story short, we ended up, there were four bids on the house and uh, we had to increase, um, increase our initial bid. We went over the asking price and uh, we, uh, we got the house. Now the way we got the house, oh, Marina is on, hi. So the way we got the house is we offered cash payment, no mortgage, and we offered no inspection. Okay. And uh, that is the way that we usually proceed in uh, all our purchases for, for flips. Now, the reason for that, and it's not necessarily for everybody, and that's why I want to make sure that you understand the implications, is that for, for us, because my husband is a contractor, Basically, he feels that whatever he would be able to see, it would be the same thing as an inspector would be able to see. And the inspector would not be able to go inside the walls and open up the walls. And as you know, there's always surprises when we open the walls up. So we took a chance. We took a risk. OK, and actually we, we've had quite a few surprises, um, but we uh, bid uh, a higher price. We went no inspection no cash payment and we offered flexible signing date because as one of the tricks one of my tricks that i'm sharing is that when we buy properties for a flip especially in this particular case the owner of the house was in the house when we went to see it which was very good which was very very good for me because i was able to chat him up and charm him and i was able to kind of dig for important information that i would be able to use after uh for myself and one of the information um that they, that i found out is that they were quite anxious to go back to their original country they were just taking their retirement and they wanted to leave as early as possible 
So that's why we offered them a flexible signing date, okay? And that all of those elements together played in our favor, and so we won the bid. Um, then there were other things happened. There was a lot of things in the house that were not uh, conformed to the certificate of location. And anyway, we ended up lowering the price. All that to say that we got it at a really, really amazing, amazing price. So we really left that. But, but now let me show you, let me show you what we inherited. So we saw it, uh, we saw it once and then we waited three months basically to sign, to sign with them. And uh, just a sec, here we go. So now I'm going to show you uh, when I walked into the house. <clears throat> Okay, this is, this is, I'm showing you the pictures of before. So the couple we bought it from are Europeans and they lived in this house for 22 years. They loved this house. It was extremely well maintained. It was very well taken care of, but it was extremely not to my taste. And it was very, very rustic, as you can tell. So as you go in, you, you're welcome to, to post comments, by the way. And I am going to see them. So you can tell me, you know, what your thoughts are as, as we're going there. I'm just trying to see the video is live now. Can I see myself talking? Oh, yeah. Okay. Debbie, Kathy, Debbie, oh, Muriel is on. Marina, Kathy. Okay, guys, say hi to me. So this, um, I didn't take all of the pictures, unfortunately, of everything, but uh, there is a, a front door entrance, which you'll see in a different angle. And then this is kind of an addition. This is an extra um, extension that they added onto the house, which is kind of a total waste of space, to be honest. And the reason that only part of the wall is open is because um, it's a supporting wall. So it's a one floor house. Like I said, it's very small and was really um, built like piece by piece. So this piece was added on uh, sometime maybe five years ago. Now, one of the things that I want you to pay attention to is the flooring. So when you're going to see uh, the different rooms, it's like, honestly, in this, in this house, which is maybe the whole house is maybe thousand square feet. There were four, there's four different levels. So there's step downs and then, and then there is uh, seven different flooring. It's like every room of the house has its own flooring, whatever he was able to buy on sale, I think. So our goal, when I saw that, I knew that there were certain things that were um, non-negotiable for me, that whether we're going to move the, there. So I forgot to tell you that my husband is really wanting to for us to move in there in this particular house. He wants to live on the waterfront, and so we're still debating it. It's still a... Uh, it's still a debate between the two of us, but we might be moving into that house sometime in the fall before the end of this year. And then uh, we will be looking long term into how we can restructure this house, how we can rebuild it. And that I have to work on with the city. And it's going to be complicated because it is a very small plot of land and it's directly on the water and there are environmental protection laws that don't allow to use the first 10 meters from the shore uh, for, to build on, so which, which leaves us very, very small footprint on which we can build. So there's gonna, it's going to be a long process. I expect it to probably take a year before we can figure out with the city uh, what we're allowed to do. We're going to need an architect. We're going to need a structural engineers. And so that's going to be, it's quite a big project. It's uh, it's going to be complicated. It's going to be big. It's going to be probably the biggest project that we've done to date. If we decide to rebuild, whether we demolish this house completely or we can just extend it, we want to maybe build a second floor if allowed. Now the house has no foundation. So that's a big problem. There's no basement. There's no foundation. It's sitting like on pillars. So for now, because of all these considerations and because we know that this is probably a temporary solution, that in a year or two years, we might be demolishing part 
quickly or fully, obviously we did not want to invest a lot, a lot of money. And so that is exactly the same principle as if, you, if you're selling your house, you want to invest as little as possible to make the biggest return possible. So I needed to find a way of making it look better, <laughs> making it look livable to my taste, even if it's not exactly to my taste, but making it look at least better and at the same time not to spend a lot of money doing it and that is why i'm showing you so this is how the entrance looks so let's go look so this was their main living area okay notice the floors and put your comments in if you want so as you see the whole house is covered in wood like wood paneling we're talking wood paneling everywhere even in the bathroom as you'll see so all the furniture is theirs and by the way they left me all of the furniture because they went back to their country they basically just walked out of the house and left everything as is so even if it's not necessarily to my taste like this couch is a very high quality couch it's very comfortable actually it's just the color it's not something that i would have ever chosen but i have to work with what's what's there and like i said right now we're not moving there yet so i decided we decided together with my husband we kind of made a compromise that we're going to make the house look really better with you know a few thousand dollars and then we're going to rent it as an airbnb for the summer uh partially so we keep with the weekends for ourselves but during the week we're renting it out and oh my god guys i just i'm gonna reveal it right away like i had no idea what to expect we filled up to the labor day and even beyond within three days my calendar is fully booked my airbnb it's crazy okay so it just shows you the power of transformation and staging and making something look so much better basically with all the bookings that i have we paid for all of the renovations that we've done and then some we're going to be able to pay about three months of mortgage uh the, the debt that we have on this house i'm trying to put away at least thousand dollars a month towards it so we're going to be able to add about the thousand dollars lots of naughty pine it makes it makes the ceiling yeah the ceilings are kind of they're actually um like a cathedral ceiling but so this is the living room okay this is another picture that i think i stole this picture from the mls actually from the original listing but it's exactly this one i took and this one is just uh, like you know enhanced but it's exactly the same so one thing i want you to see in this picture i want you to pay attention to the flooring and to pay attention to your uh the, the light it was a fan a fan uh, light uh, and I want you to pay attention. There's a huge dining room set that's sitting here in the corner. And the couch is extremely awkward, right? You agree with me? Because if you look here, the TV is in front of you. The couch is sideways. Like I was not really understanding how do these people actually watch TV. And then there's this humongous dining room set for six which is occupying like literally a quarter of this this one it's a very nice room it's a one one nice big room so that's how the living room looked now this was a non-negotiable for me and so when i'm talking about non-negotiables i think in any type of project when you when you decide you want to work on something and you have a very limited budget that is what i would recommend is to start with thinking about your non-negotiables like what is your priority number one what is which room is you could not live with <laughs> and for me knowing that we might be moving there or if we're going to be renting it as an airbnb this bathroom was a completely non-negotiable it had to be demolished and it had to be redone why well, first of all, just, you know, <laughs> have a have a look, you know, yeah, I think you'll figure out why you can look to see the flooring. But the interesting thing is that this bathroom had no shower. So on the left, you can see there is a huge jacuzzi. It was humongous. And I realized afterwards, because, you know, when you see a house only for like 15 minutes, you don't necessarily notice all the details. 
but it was only a handheld shower, which you can see here. So the person literally has to get into this bathtub and then close, that's what they were doing, close the curtain and then shower yourself from the bathtub, like by holding the, uh, the shower thing. So that was absolutely not for me. So let me know what you're thinking. <laughs> like, is this, would that be your non-negotiable as well? I hope you're going to tell me that, yeah, that it is. So at the beginning, my husband was really not happy when I told him about this. And I, and I said, well, this is my condition. You know, if, if we are going to move into this house, eventually this is the first thing that i don't care if we're going to demolish this house in a year or two we're going to rebuild it i i need to have a decent a good looking bathroom it's number one with a proper shower so that that is what so that was my priority number one so then this is the bedroom okay this is the master bedroom um, the way the way it was, to be honest, I haven't really done a lot of changes because I thought that, you know, it was decent enough. And uh, the interesting thing in this uh, bedroom is that sh this window, it's not actually a real window. It's very odd because they added the front hallway. This is a patio door, but it gives out onto the main entrance and the actual entrance of the house. And you're gonna see it from another side uh, in a few minutes. And then she had those sheer curtains on, so which was very bizarre because as soon as you open the front door and you walked into the house, you basically see your bedroom the master bedroom so you can make some nice interesting jokes about that which i did you know right you can kind of skip the whining and dining of a, of a lady you're entertaining you can take them straight into the bedroom so unfortunately um this is not and so there's no window in this bed in this bedroom window to the outside and that is i would say probably the thing that bothers me the most because I really, really like having windows. And so this bedroom, I find it a little, it, it chokes me up a little bit. Like I just find that it's very, it's, okay, there's no, it's dark, there's no window, but I tried to make it, make it as cozy as possible. And we left it as is pretty much because we, were, we didn't have the time, we didn't have the money. So that I was willing to compromise. Eventually I would like to have this bare bedroom repainted as well. But for now we decided to leave it as is because we had other priorities. So as I mentioned, we really work by priorities. So the first priority was to uh, demolish and rebuild the bathroom. And the second priority was I wanted to be, to create a second bedroom because I knew perfectly well that whatever, whether we live there or if I rent it for Airbnb or if we decide to sell it, which we won't, not, not, not the way it is. And for now, like I said, it's my husband's dream. But if we were to sell it, you definitely, you know, need a second bedroom in the house. So they actually did, this is the previous owners, they actually had a space. This is the photo I took, but this is the photo that came uh, with the MLS listing. So they had this room, which looked very small. Why it looked so small? Because they had a laundry and then they had this humongous, humongous closet where they kept a lot of stuff. She was a little bit of a hoarder. She had a lot of things like if you see this picture here, she had bags and bags of stuff that was brand new that she bought at home since and um, things for the kitchen and towels and all these extra things that she had that were like in shelves and shelves of things. But basically that made this um, this house a one bedroom house. So keep keep giving me co po give, give me giving me your co comments okay because i want to know what you're thinking as you're looking at this so for me this was the priority number two was a priority number one was to redo the bathroom priority number two was to redo to make a second bedroom out of this room and priority number three was to reduce the number of different floor floor coverings that was in the house. So if you see, this is, you know, this is um, 
laminated wood, like of very, very cheap quality. And like I said, if you look at the pictures carefully, every room has its different flooring. So that was just, just, just not, not working for me. So even if we couldn't necessarily redo all of the flooring, I wanted to at least have <laughs> fewer different floorings in the house. So this is the original kitchen. So I believe, let me just see. Yeah. So this is the original kitchen. Again, I had to make some choices. The kitchen, actually, the view from the kitchen is amazing, but it was a um, an outside, an exterior veranda that the previous owners closed in, and so they just continued with the slope of the roof. So the roof is kind of low, but the view from the windows is absolutely spectacular because you're literally hanging over the water. Here it's a galley kitchen that they built themselves. Um, I thought at the beginning I was freaking out a little bit because I thought it was really not not enough storage in this house and I mean there's not enough storage in the house we know that and I just didn't I'm not used to having kitchens without uh, cab cabinets especially upper cabinets because I love cabinets but in this kitchen it's just not possible to have upper cabinets because the ceiling is sloped and the ceiling is too low so we decided that for now we're not able to do anything really with this kitchen I just cleaned it up I removed a lot of things but it pretty much stayed the way it is now this is the other side of that kitchen so it's like a one long uh, sunroom or veranda and you can see the flooring again you know the flooring stayed as is and that was the way they had their furniture organized so they had there was only two of them they had a very they had a ikea <clears throat> table wood table of course everything else is wood why the table wouldn't be and the chairs and then they had this very very long couch which actually i found it on on ikea website and i've never seen this before but it's called a four seater couch it's actually for four people so it was very long and um there was really it was a very narrow room as you can tell so it was like very difficult to circulate and the way their table was positioned it was only good for two people so literally you could only have two people sitting there which i knew would not work for me because we have kids visiting or we have friends visiting or you know if i was i was always thinking in my mind about the airbnb what can i do to make it more attractive so if i want to run an airbnb in here i need to have at least two bedrooms and so i can rent it to at least four family of four people preferably maybe five so what can i do how i can make this room more attractive without necessarily spending a lot of uh, a lot of money so that was not a priority for me i knew i could just clean it up make it look better but the fact that there are just those windows giving out on the water that already like you know people will forget and forgive everything else so tell me what you're thinking and let me know you know if you have any questions as i'm going along so now we're going to reveal and I'm going to explain what we did. So this is the same picture, but I think from MLS. So this one is, I took it. And this was the MLS picture. You can see that there is basically no room <laughs> to walk to walk between the table and, and the couch, okay? So that was not going to work. So let us now talk about the transformation, the things that we decided to do, and I'll give you all the costs and everything. So as you can tell, this is the entrance. <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, at the entrance, you have the patio door. So you're just seeing it from the other side. This patio door actually leads directly into the bedroom right so there's nothing I can do about that there is not possible to close it there is no window in the bedroom we cannot change it because on the other side of the bedroom wall they added a garage so if you were to make a window in the, in the, the bedroom in the wall or over the bed for example it would be totally pointless because it's going into the garage so for now there is no solution it has to stay as is but what could I do to enhance it to make it better so very simple, very, very simple solution. And you'll see from another side, I replaced the curtains. 
So instead of having a see-through curtains that you walk into the house and it looks really ridiculous because you can look straight into the master bedroom, I went to Ikea and I got a set of um, cover, what are they called? The, the, the not transparent ones, but the ones that cover cover everything. And I see Marina just put a, car, a comment. Make sure you spend plenty of time there winter before deciding to move there. As someone who lives not far from the water and the climate, yeah, an island living can be uncomfortable. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a very good point, Marina. Yeah, I know it's pretty humid there. So, so basically here, the only thing I did is I put the uh, the uh, shade, what are they called? The shade covering, you know, the, un the, the dark curtains that you cannot see through. And so that already makes a huge difference. And my idea, <clears throat> eventually, what I'd like to do is maybe to put a big Ikea, like a Pax wardrobe in the front and use that for extra storage and also to put uh, like winter jackets and all the winter stuff in there. And the, the benefit of it is that it will also cover most of that patio door. And so it's gonna look more like a normal entrance because the actual entrance is, you know, it's a pretty decent size, size space, but it's really lacking. So I haven't bought that Pax wardrobe and I don't need it right now. Plus there is a lot of um, shortages right now, but eventually that's a solution I'm considering is adding a uh, storage space by putting a, a Pax a stand, standalone a wardrobe in front of the patio door. The other thing I want you to see is the entrance okay so this is like a hallway which honestly is kind of a useless space right now so it's you know this is this is the before <laughs> and uh and this is the now exactly the same it's not doesn't serve a lot of purpose you know give me some comments here so what what did we do the only thing that we did is we painted the wood paneling here and I think it made such a huge difference. So instead of it being all wood, we painted the wood paneling. And then I just rearranged, remember all this furniture comes uh, from the previous sellers. I inherited the house with the furniture. So none of it is mine, but look, so it was like this. So they have this little black chair there, which was kind of pointless. Like, why do you have your two chairs, the sitting area there? They had that, that big dresser on the left. So I just moved, they rearranged the furniture, right? So I moved the furniture around. So you see, I brought one of the little chairs here in the front so people can sit and put their shoes on, make it more comfortable. And then I, I moved, this bench was actually in the front, so I moved it there and I put that buffet, that dresser at the end. Now, if I were to live in this house, I would make some changes. I would probably end up using that the back end of this hallway for now as my office because there are windows here on the side. It's nice and bright. It's an open space. I could put a desk instead of the dresser. I could put a desk there and a chair and have my cabinet. So I'm considering that what would be my my another option for me if I wanted to live in this house that could become that could become my my uh, office space. It could also become my exercise space. It's not the best <laughs> to people walk in and see the exercise space, but it could, but probably it would be uh, my office. So any comments so far? Oh yeah, okay, Debbie is saying so much bigger and brighter. Okay, now this is, uh, I wanna show you the living room. So the two different views of the living room. Let me show you the way it was before so you can compare. This is what the living room was like before. So again, there was no question of us uh, doing major, major stuff in here. So what did we do? So first of all, I got rid of this big dining room set. I actually sold it. I sold it probably too cheaply, but it was in very good condition, but we just don't need this big dining room set with six chairs. Then as you saw, I turned the couch around. So there is two elements to this, right? There's an element of home staging and there is an element of actually doing some updating. So again, the updates are minimal. 
we went uh, to paint. We painted this whole room white up to the ceiling. I decided to leave the ceiling wood for two reasons. One, because it was just too difficult to paint the ceiling. It's all varnished, so it's a, it's a too big of a job for what we were willing to do right now. And the other reason is I still wanted to keep this a little bit of charm, a little bit of a rustic country house feeling. So I thought that if I painted the walls up to the ceiling with all this, um, I wanted to see uh, for you to see the brown. If you saw the brown here, do you see all this brown finishing also, which is like really, really dark. So I got rid of all of that just with a can of paint. <laughs> And uh, hold on, so just a sec here. I lost my okay, where's my picture here? So I got rid of all of that and just painted all the way to the white. Honestly, it was like a one day, one day job for uh, to get it done. Then um, the other change, which I thought is something that it made a huge difference, is I changed the light fixture. So I got rid of the uh, the ugly fan with three lights and I ordered on the Wayfair, it was $120. I ordered this black iron uh, light fixture with five, five candle lights and we replaced that. So that made a huge difference in the look. Uh, then you will also notice that, I don't know if you've seen this, but we also replaced the flooring. So that was a thousand dollar expense for most of the house. So the flooring, uh, we started it at the living room level and we went all the way into the master bedroom, into the second bedroom, which I created out of the laundry storage room and the little step down hallway here. So all of the main area of the house now has one cohesive floor that makes sense. And then uh, we left the original tile in this sun room then kitchen area because we're not even sure what we're going to do there and uh, we're just not touching that for now and the that hallway in the front okay so that was a thousand dollar expense to do that the other thing that we did and uh it's something that i'm not a very creative or crafty artsy crafty person i don't really like enjoy doing that stuff i'm not particularly good at it but um i took the old the bookshelves those brown bookshelves that were really bothering me let me show it uh, show you to them again so it's the same bookshelves okay this is how they had it i took out that um tv unit which was really outdated and i knew i had to leave the bookshelves for now i would have liked to have them painted white but my husband totally refused <laughs> he had enough he did not want to to paint them so then the solution that i found was to buy <clears throat> a cheap roll of um that drawer the, the sticky paper that you put at the bottom of the drawers it literally cost twenty dollars and we took out my girlfriend helped me we took out the sh the shelves and we stuck the paper to the back wall of the shelving of the units um it's got a little bit of like a marble look design and then once we did that it took us maybe an hour an hour and a half to do both shelves and then uh, we put them the both bookcases so then we put it back and then i styled it so I actually, we moved uh, some books around, we added some vases, we added some cute things for the look. And of course, I staged it, right? So you can see I moved a bit. So now this one part was actually painting and fixing it up, changing the floor. The other part was simply moving the couch the way it should be, so facing the TV. I added some cushions, I added an area rugs, I put the second black chair in the corner, added some artwork, a lamp, changed the light fixture, and uh, styled the bookshelves. That's all we did. So not a huge expense here at all. I see Brenda is on, hello. So that was what we did with the living room, which was you know a big change. Now, let me show you the bathroom. So as I said, the bathroom was not negotiable for me. 
So the bathroom was completely redone. And so now we have both a laundry room. So I brought the laundry and washer dryer from that second bedroom or from what she had as a, as a laundry room uh, into, the, uh, into the bathroom because I was able to remove that huge um, jacuzzi. And then we put a decent sized shower. So the shower, there's no bathtub, but that shower is 48 inches. <clears throat> so it's not even a small shower. You know, it's very, very comfortable. Um, 48 by 30. And then I went and I purchased the whatever I could find, you know, not expensive, a very cheap tiles. Okay, they're not good quality tiles, but I really wanted to save uh, money. So I, I, I shopped around until I found tiles that look like marble. They're very nice looking. They're not very good quality, but we don't care because it's temporary. And um, I spent, I believe, about $600 on the tiles. They were under $3 a square foot. Okay, so I did quite well. So that required some, some shopping. I went to two or three of my favorite uh, ceramic places and uh, until I, I found the tiles that I was happy with. And um, at the end here, what uh, I like buying my vanities at Ikea because, I, again, I shopped. I price compared. I wanted to have a storage unit. So if you see, you can't see it on this picture, but you can see it a little bit here. So it's gray. So there is a storage unit because this house really lacks storage. It's one of, it's probably the most, um, the most, the, the least desirable things or things that are bothering us the most is that there's really not enough storage. But um, in the bathroom, I really wanted to be, to be able to put the towels and cleaning products and uh, shampoos and things like that. So there is a, a nice little unit from Ikea, which allowed me to do all of that. And then I also put a vanity uh, from Ikea again, which has two drawers and that allows me to store toilet paper and some more towels and you know, brushes and hair and a hair dryer and things like that. So the this whole um, Ikea set was about $600. And uh, the bathroom materials, the most expensive thing, of course, was the shower. My husband made the tiles of uh, the tile floor. So um, the shower was, right, unfortunately, all the materials and prices went up like crazy right now. So um, the shower glass walls were the most expensive at $1,100. So the whole bathroom materials are approximately three, three and a half thousand dollars. So let's say, okay, three and a half will cover me, even four. So that was our biggest, biggest expense on that whole renovation was the bathroom. But like I said, that was one thing that was not negotiable for me. So, okay, so we're talking. So what do you think so far? Give me some, give me some fire. Give me some comments. Tell me something. I see you're watching, but <clears throat> I'm not seeing any comments. So just, just tell me what you think. Now, this is the, the bedroom, the master bedroom. And uh, as you saw, I'm going to go back and show you the before and after. So I did not really change anything because as, as I said, you see, this is not this room was not my priority because I didn't, I couldn't get to everything. I didn't want to spend the money. So even if it's not exactly to my taste, I just wanted to do a little something to make it look better, more appealing, but uh, it's not really a room that <clears throat> I was going to renovate or do anything. As a matter of fact, like I said, eventually I'd probably like to paint the walls white. This is how it was before on MLS with the transparent, uh, was see-through curtains which makes no sense and so this is how I made it to be which is pretty much the same but I just added it's even the same furniture but I added some things for a uh, staging I changed the curtains and I added a bench I added my own bedding uh, of course and one thing that you're not seeing is that when you open so this is the only storage space it's very very big it's a huge closet but it was so bad they like basically they had just like some whatever cheapy boards inside like they never really finished that closet so uh we added <laughs> so we added um a closet so my husband bought some melamine and last week he uh 
built a really nice closet, like the shelving and the hanging bars and everything. Everything is nice and neat and really pretty. And Muriel says, I love the stone wall and bathroom is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So the stone wall, to be honest, it's not something that I would probably do. Like I'd much rather have a window and uh, I would probably keep it white. But again, we also changed the flooring in here. So you can tell, you know, that with the, with the lighter color floor, everything is a very light color floor. It really brings it out and it makes it less, like it makes it more kind of cozy and less gloomy. So this is this is what it is and this is what it's gonna stay for a while but this is a huge transformation this is the room i wanna i wanna focus on i wanna show you so i'm gonna go back and show you what it looked like before <laughs> this is the room so this is the laundry room and storage room which we turned into a second bedroom so this is the before it's actually this room. I love it because it has a window and the window gives out onto the yard and the water. So I, unfortunately, the only size bed we can fit in here is um, double bed. So otherwise, I mean, I really want to move into the room. So this is the room. I think this is probably one uh, with, together with the bathroom, of course, but this is like an amazing transformation. So what did we do here? We removed that huge closet. We moved the washer and the dryer to the bathroom, as you saw, and then uh, we, we changed the flooring. So we just covered the old tiles, whatever was there, just put it on top. We put the same flooring as everywhere else. And everything was carefully measured. I added lights, so the light fixtures were added. And then uh, everything was carefully measured, so I saw that I could fit a double bed in, which I happened to have in my in my other house, my house where I live, because my daughter moved out, so I had that extra extra bed. And we painted again; we painted the walls white. And because we didn't want to spend the money on building another closet, and we didn't want to spend the time, we were running out of time. We had to do this fast. The easy, cheap solution was to go to IKEA again and buy this uh, standalone wardrobe, which is literally $200. And it's perfect for whoever is using the second bedroom because there's some shelving and there is space to hang clothes and it has a mirror, which makes the room look much bigger. And that's another one of my little tricks is whenever you can use the mirrors to make the rooms look bigger. And of course, because everything is white, it makes the room look so much bigger. Um, and uh, Muriel is asking, would you add an art piece on the wall beside the, uh, beside the bed? Yeah, right here. I've considered it if I, I could. Um, if I were to add a, a, an artwork here, it would definitely have to would have to be like black and white because that's that's the theme for this room. It's pretty much everything is black, white, and gray. But uh, at the end of the day, I didn't have the time to be honest to go shop for artwork, and also I just didn't want to spend an extra hundred or two hundred dollars, and also it was just not necessary. Because the room is so cute and so appealing and so airy that it, it, I could add it, but it's not, it's not a must. Like it's not really missing anything in that room. So I just left it like that for now. Okay. But what I did is I did have to buy the, um, the uh, window covering. So I went with, um, wood, fake wood, um, horizontal blinds. And uh, they cost me, I'm trying to remember, and I was really, uh, really, really happy. I found them on sale. So I think it was like $40 instead of $80. And um, we had to put them on the outside of the window because there was not enough room to put them on the inside. But they're white. They work perfectly well. They close for somebody to sleep during the day. You can lift them up or leave them all, all open like they are here. And so that's that was my expense instead of buying <laughs> the artwork. Okay. Then uh, what else I have to show you? Yeah. So this is the kitchen. So for the kitchen, as I mentioned before, I'll show it to you again, you know, the way so you have, you can remember what it looked like before. That was a choice. That was a choice that I made. 
I basically did not do anything with this kitchen. What I did is I got rid of all of her little things everywhere and all her cupboards were full of the stuff. I removed um, the little carpets that were on the floor. So, and I kind of just uh, staged it. I arranged it to look better and it does look hundred times better and brighter, but I made a choice of um, not not changing um, not changing anything. So this is the way the kitchen is. I don't want to do the other picture one. Um, yeah, so, so this is the way the kitchen looks right now. And uh, you know, the beauty of this kitchen really is uh, the water. So when people come here, like they don't really notice the kitchen. I put, I removed everything from top shelves. I added some, you know, nice mugs. I, I basically cleaned everything from the counters. I created a little coffee station here. And, uh, and I made it nice and clean and tidy and that's it. But what I do want to show you, it's the other side of the room, which is, so we went from here, okay? This is how they lived in, in this room. And again, I kept it the same, but we went to, to here. So what did I do here so you can see is I replaced the couch. So as we discussed, the couch was that they had was way too big. And so I cleverly convinced my younger daughter to whom I donated this couch, which is a, a much smaller couch and it's fake, fake white leather. So I don't really care if somebody's not careful on it. It's an older couch. I, I used to have it in my staging inventory. And uh, so I did an exchange with my daughter. She wanted a bigger couch. So I donated that bigger couch to her and I took the smaller couch and I put it there and you can't see, but I do have artwork um, artwork over it. And then that allowed me to turn, uh, to have a lot more space here for the, uh, for the walk through with the kitchen chair. And I replaced the kitchen chair. So if you saw, remember she, they only had two wood chairs, but I bought four chairs at Ikea for $35 each. And I was able to put four chairs easily. And now if somebody comes and if they're poor people, they can eat directly like that, or they could move the table out and they would have the four chairs. And as a matter of fact, I even added, like I put a fifth chair in the corner, which is a folding chair in case there are five people, but I'm trying to rent to, to maximum of four people. As you can see, the, the view is spectacular. You, would, you really think that you are on a, on a cruise ship when when you're looking so that is what i wanted to show you so i i didn't i'm gonna just for a sec i'm gonna stop sharing here um yeah so you can tell me you know you can give me uh your uh your uh, your comments but the point i'm trying to make here is that I, I, I know how much money I invested. So to be honest, of course, if you have somebody else doing it, a contractor, you do have to add a little bit more. So my estimate of total of everything we did is between six and seven thousand dollars, which all came back to me within just the two next two months of rental. Um, if you have and I did not in that amount of money, I did not count my husband's salary. I did not count his time. And that's by the way, is one of the things that really bothers me on all these HGTV shows when they give you um you know all the information about how much the renovations cost, and you're always like, Oh, this is like not a lot. How did they manage to do that? You know, how did they manage to renovate the whole house for fifty thousand dollars? Well, the reason is a lot of times, I think the numbers are, are false because they probably do not account for all the free stuff that they get from the sponsors and also for the, the time, the salary of the contractors, the people who actually do the work. But if you were to add, let's say a salary of a contractor, you're probably looking more at 10, $11,000 for this whole renovations. But, um, what I'm trying to convey to you is that 
Uh, you need when you when you have a little project, whatever you decide to do, you always have to a decide on your priorities and decide what is your non-negotiable and things that you really cannot live without or live with. You start there, and then it's very important to plan your little project properly. So if you don't want to run over your budget, you kind of have to have a number in your mind already, like how much money are you willing to dedicate to this project so whether it's three thousand or five thousand or ten thousand dollars and then you start from there and when it's properly planned you go backwards and you might not be able to do everything you might not be able to decide to do you know everything perfect and change everything you want oh look at us who's showing up luna adriana it's a good morning but the important thing is that you go by priorities you go with your budget and you can really create some amazing amazing transformations and amazing things with if you're clever so sometimes you know just a can of paint is you saw and you know choosing the right flooring and changing a light fixture changing some curtains putting an area rug down adding a couple of plants so they're all small things that can uh, add up to a pretty amazing result and the proof to me honestly like I am now in love with this house like the first time I saw this house I was pretty horrified I was like oh my god there's no way there's no way I can live in this house and now I'm almost in love with this house and I can see myself living there even if it's not 100% to what I would 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 love to see but i can see myself living there for a year or two it's very comfortable it's cozy it's clean and it has a really good vibe about it now and the proof is that like i said before at the beginning that within three days of me putting it on airbnb and not even having one single review we rented out our whole summer beyond the labor day and only during the weekdays because all the weekends we decided to keep for myself because my husband wants to use the, the house for his boating and it became kind of like our, our weekend cottage uh, but stay, staycation home for now until we decide what to do and I will take Marina's advice under consideration about the winter time which I'm a little bit concerned about as well in terms of humidity and, and living there so but all that to say uh, you ladies that I hope that you found this enjoyable I hope you found this fun I hope you found this valuable it gave you some ideas and some tips tips on things that you could apply to your own projects and um, as you know you know this is what I do I do this for myself I do it for my clients so if you need uh, help if you want to discuss something with me you have a little project you want some advice just uh, put your comments below or um, you can send me a message and I'll be very happy to discuss your project with you and see what kind of ideas we can come up together to make sure that you spend as little as possible for the biggest return on your money and the biggest enjoyment of your space if it's for yourself. So I want to thank you. We went very, very long today. We went for an hour. I guess I'm passionate about the transformations that I do. I, I honestly, I love them as much as, as uh, it's stressful and we fight my husband and I about it. But at the end of the day, when we look at what we've accomplished, it's I'm pretty proud of this one. So thank you very much for being with me, hanging out with me and sending me all these hearts and stuff. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And if there's anything I can do for you, just um just let me know so i will i will talk to you soon bye thanks marina talk to you soon bye